Welcome to Jay's Yagi. This is my experience, my journey with the Mon Audio Super Mini Mon Speakers. Super Mon Mini Speakers. <laughs> Whoever named this, please. What a mouthful. Anyways, this speaker is from Korea, my motherland. Although arguably I've been here since I was like six years old, so I guess, does that make me like, I don't know. But anyways, Koreans, right? One thing I have to admit though is that a lot of people, every time they see me, they ask me this question and the question is, do you watch K-dramas? And the answer is usually no. But there was this one K-drama where an audiophile was like the star of the show. And it was basically, you know, the storyline is two people getting married and the hectic, you know, that arise from marriage and stuff like that. I ended up watching it because my friend was like, oh, there's an audiophile, there's an audiophile, Jay, you have to watch it. So I ended up watching it and this speaker was there. Now usually I get really excited when I see any speaker or any audio gear in a movie or a K-drama or whatever because it's cool to see and I'm kind of a nerd, right, in that way. But this speaker, I, I never seen this speaker before. And almost exact that moment, exactly that moment, um, this company reaches out to me in an email and goes, hey, you wanna review this? And I'm just like, what, what just happened, right? Like, so spontaneously at the exact same time I saw the speaker in that K-drama. I had to actually go back and check if it was the same speakers. Anyways, very small speaker, hence the name Mini. Now, for those of you that are like, what's up with a small speaker? Like, why would you even bother with a small speaker like this? Why not get a floor stander or a bigger bookshelf for that matter? I'm glad you asked. Let me share you a story. So there was a time in my journey where I just thought the same way. I'm like, if I have $2,000, for example, why would I buy a smaller speaker instead of a bigger speaker? If I can get away with buying a $2,000 floor stander, I would rather do that as long as I have the room instead of buying a $2,000 bookshelf speaker. It made more sense. You know, you get a bigger speaker for the money. Seems like you're getting a better value. And I guess that was one of the mistakes or misconceptions I had earlier on into this hobby. And the speaker that really taught me like, that's not the case. Size does not equal fidelity or how good a speaker sounds was the LS35A. Now LS35A is a legendary speaker and some of these speakers sell for $10,000 and believe it or not, this tiny speaker sells for $10,000 and probably right now someone is buying somewhere in Hong Kong for $10,000 and someone's selling it for $10,000. Incredibly expensive but also legendary, it has you know, collective value and so on. It was a BBC monitor. And when I first heard that speaker, I, I was taken back because it had imaging, it had sound staging, and most importantly, it just disappeared. Like the speaker disappeared. And that was the first time where I found to you know, have speakers just completely disappear. Because as you guys know, I used to work at a high-end retail store and we had big speakers all the time. And those speakers, yes, they had great imaging, great performance and technically disappeared but the way it disappeared was way different. Like these tiny speakers disappeared in a way where it seemed like there was no sound coming from the speakers at all. Now back to the minis. So there's merit to this design. Now the price point of this speaker is, it looks expensive, right? And I have this little turntable here. It's $2,000. Most of you guys are clicking away right now. But let me tell you, the reason I say that these are worth it is because this speaker is not like any other speakers. These speakers are pretty darn high quality, like the jam-packed quality into this speaker. And I'll show you some of the cutaways of the speaker right now. First of all, the speaker is made out of aluminum, full aluminum chassis and you know high-grade aluminum, 6601 or something like that. And we have WBT type binding post, and I think it's actually genuine WBT, correct me if I'm wrong. And also they use high quality Mondorf capacitors and patented inductors and stuff like that. And they have some special technology going on here that I'm probably missing out. But the whole point being is that this speaker like just jam packed with technology and you know, quality and performance and all that. So I was excited to hear the speaker despite being so small. Now the limitation with these kind of small speakers as you can probably imagine is the fact that they are not going to have much bass. Right? Bass has to do a lot with the driver's size as well as the cabinetry and stuff like that to produce any type of woody wild bass. And it looked like it was a little bit bright sounding, like just the look of it. You know, you ever get that feeling when you look at a speaker and you go like, 
ah, that speaker has an AMT tweeter. It's an AMT tweeter. You know, ribbon tweeter, whatnot, you know, metal dome tweeter. And you haven't heard it, but it looks bright. You just know that that speaker is going to produce some high frequency definition that you may or may not like. Well, this was the speaker that kind of reminded me of that, right? That bright sound. But when I actually hooked it up, my mind completely changed. Because despite this look of looking a little bit more like industrial, maybe a little bit more bright sounding looking, as I said, um, it doesn't. It doesn't have that characteristic. It does have very clear sound, but it's not, it's not in your face. It's not beaming at you. It's not shredding your ears like some metal domes or ribbons or AMT tweeters do for me. In fact, it has this very airy and nice presentation and whatever music I throw at it, it's able to handle it pretty darn good. Now I was playing a bunch of music like Dio, Holy Diver, and this is like a, you know, like a metal track, right? Like it has a lot of stuff going on and like, at times this track can get really shouty, really bright with some speakers like Klipsch for example, Focal is a no-go for me with that kind of track. But this track was able to handle that and more. Like vocals sounded so sweet, female vocals. Um, for example, this track right here, I played, oh my goodness. Just a little loving. It's just beautiful. I absolutely loved the vocals. It reminded me so much of the LS35A. But dare I say, even better than the LS35A in a lot of aspects. One aspect is like the clarity, the overall clarity, the, the breadth of details in the music was just able to portray itself in such a very, very luscious, warm, yet, you know, detailed fashion where it's like all the details are there presented at you, but it's so, it's so well done to where none of it is fatiguing for me. So I was playing lots of music this morning and I was just like, Wow, this is amazing speakers. This sounds really, really good and such a small speaker. And I was thinking to myself, this speaker is probably the best mid-range and high frequency I've heard in this price category, period. I'm talking about like, you know, comparing it to like CSS Audio, Bocard, S400 Mark II, and all these speakers that I was talking about having great mid-range mid -range and high frequency and overall performance. Yes, they do, they do have that, but at the same time, they're going for that one hit kill, right? Bass, all the way to the high frequency. Well, this speaker concentrates more on the mid-range and the high frequency. It's not going to have the impact or the rumble of the CSS Audio or the Bocard S400 Mark II for that matter. So let's put that out there. However, this speaker, think about it this way. $2,000 and you spend $500 on a subwoofer, for example, for about the same price as the CSS Audio or the Bocard S400 Mark II. And you're getting a much, much higher fidelity of mid-range and high frequency. Now, it does have its limitations. Like for example, if you're in a really large size room, I wouldn't suggest this speaker because this speaker is very, very small. This is more for near field or small rooms or medium sized rooms. And yes, it can handle up to some somewhat of a medium sized room, but if you have a room like that, then you would go for bigger speakers, right? Regardless. This speaker is for like condos and it makes sense because Koreans mostly live in condos. They don't really live in houses because of, you know, it's a small country. So they're really going for like the clients of Korea who appreciate high fidelity sound, mid-range and high frequency that concentrate on vocals and stuff like that. And it makes sense because most Korean music, and you might not know this, is like about love songs. 99% of Korean songs is love songs, right? Breakup, heartbreak, all that kind of stuff. And it just touches you it's just like a poetry. I absolutely love Korean music. A lot of it was bestowed down to me by my grandfather to my mother and then to me. And I have some on vinyl as well. And uh, you know, I absolutely love it. But at the same time, it's like even rock is kind of like more jazzy, more vocal like than like rock or Metallica in the North American market. So vocal is really good on the speaker and makes sense again because it was created by Koreans for mostly Korean music. Now, 
the company did tell me that this model specifically has been a little bit North Americanized. And I asked what that means. What does that mean, right? North Americanized. And they told me, well, Americans like their bass. So we tried to make this speaker more bassy. So this speaker apparently can go down to 60 hertz. So I'm just, I'm just gonna read from the website here. The Super Mod Mini is specially designed to replicate natural sound reproduction while achieving a wide range of frequencies from 60 hertz to 65 kilohertz. It also manages to stay true to guitar amp sound and high definition rich vocal tones with delicate frequencies allocating among unit components. So first of all, the designer of the speaker is a guitarist. So guitar and vocals, like I said, vocal makes sense because you know, Korean you know, music is mostly vocal. But I, I feel like this speaker was just made for me because you guys know I like my string instruments and vocals. So anyways, reading on, the high performance AMT tweeter produces higher frequencies from 6,800 Hz up to 25 kilohertz. So that's the AMT tweeter up here. The main full range driver consists of a specially coated paper cone, paper, that's good, that handles low to high frequency from 65 Hz to 6,800 Hz with sensitivity of 88 dB. Contained inside are isobaric networks with a Mark Fenlon designed 4 inch harmonic driver. So Mark Fenlon designed uh, drivers are very high quality, very good drivers, already a good sign. So like I said, packed with quality components in here. And again, paper, all that stuff looks that sounds amazing. But 60 Hertz, I was like, what? This small speaker? I mean, look at the, the size, look at my pen, right? So I was a little bit skeptical because 60 Hertz for a small speaker like this is uh, it's, it's asking a lot from the speaker itself. And it may cause, you know, problems with the cabinet and the resonances. But let me tell you, first of all, resonance, yeah, <laughs> you don't have to worry about that at all. The speaker is rock solid and it's heavy, man. Like this is a heavy speaker. Like I can't, it's a very heavy speaker um, for a size. It's quite a, quite disturbingly, <laughs> disturbingly heavy. Anyways, I set this speaker up and immediately I'm impressed because it has a silky sound, smooth, yet detailed, yet it's just, just perfect balance. The tonality is just, just right. It just seems, real to me like the guitar the vocals seem real to me and dare i say even even better than real because you're hearing all this nuances that you really wouldn't hear from a live setting it's like a private session and the way it sound stages is interesting too because it's like not like you're in a concert where you're sitting way back but it's more like in a venue right like in a small private venue and the sound staging is just like as if they're si you're sitting on the second row or the first row kind of situation where you're just just looking up at the singer. That's what this speaker does, and it's so realistic. Just and especially as to that because it just disappears like no tomorrow. Now, one thing I would suggest with the speaker and how I set it up is that I made sure that the speakers were pointing out towards the room. I did notice that it did get a little bit fatiguing if it was directly towed towards my ears. Another thing that I did was that instead of using a higher stand because of the awkward size of the speaker, it was kind of hard to go from 24 inch to 28 inch. 28 inch was too tall for the speaker specifically, I found. Um, you know, to have on access with the tweeter. But I went with the 24 inch stand and then I decided to add these isoacoustic feet underneath it. And I actually used two different types. I used the Indigo, right? So the Indigo is a bigger one. So I used the bigger one on the front and then I used the smaller uh, bronze one in the back and if you know about these feet i'll link it in the description below these are just absolutely great um, scientifically proven and all that stuff great stuff um isolation devices i'll link to a video i did of this specifically and the other tweaks that i do to my devices or speakers but so i used a bigger one in the front so that it has a slight bit of slant and that really helped it out because now with that slight bit of slant now it's shooting slightly up and then it was just on my ear. Perfect. 
Now another thing that I did close to the wall. Now when I did that because I wanted to get more bass out of these speakers. When I did that, wow, the imp the bass was impressed. I think it was going down below 60 hertz. It, it was impressive for a speaker this size, and for people that really don't play much bass music, like once in a while or rarely have bass music, right? Mostly it's vocals or guitars or instruments, for example. Then highly recommend it because this speaker just kills it in that regard. But if you want a little bit more bass, you can place it close to the wall and you still don't lose much. Now, another thing that I did was I pulled them out of the room, like four or five feet into the room. And with distance that much away from the wall, these speakers became insanely, insanely more crisp, transparent, and just overall more airy presentation overall in the mid-range and high frequency. But overall tone stayed the same. Now another thing that I really like about the speaker is that when you pull it out that much from the room, you get insane depth. I'm talking about more than GR Research. But one of the criticisms I had with the GR, GR Research Exos Encore speaker was that it just seemed too far away and there was no real electricity with the guitar strings, right? It didn't seem like real. It sounded good, but it didn't sound real. This speaker, maybe because of the AMT tweeter, it sounded more electric. It sounded intimate at the same time far away, but just right. Like I said, it was like the second row from the venue. Just just, in just the right distance away to mimic that realism of being in a venue or a private concert or whatnot. And that's what I really liked about the speaker is the depth, and the sound staging, and the 3D aspect. Like I could hear things to my back and it was just, it was like I was in the middle of a concert. Like it was, I was engulfed in music. And that's what I want. I want my speakers to disappear. And if that's what you want, these speakers truly disappear. And considering like LS35 A's go for like $10,000, much better buy, much better performance, honestly speaking, from my personal ex experience. It's coming from a guy who used to collect LS35A. I had the gold badge, 11 ohm and 16 ohm, sorry, 15 ohm, so on and so forth. And I was crazy about that speaker for a while. I had the Pro you know, mini monitors and stuff like that, tablets. But these speakers just destroy them all. Like in my experience, these speakers just much higher fidelity in the vocal region, guitar, uh, the tone. Everything in the mid-range and the high frequency is done so so well, but I was wanting a little bit more bass So I set these speakers up, up up in two main ways that satisfied me the most One was close closer to the wall and that gave me a very good like I said amount of bass to where I really Didn't feel like I needed a subwoofer unless I really wanted more bass for a certain type of music that I play like Limit to Your Love for example Definitely need a subwoofer for a track like that. If you don't enjoy music like that, then you don't really need a subwoofer. Now another way that I set these speakers up was like I said, pull them really out into the room four or five feet. And then this way the bass is taken out of the equation and then crossed over my subwoofers around 80 hertz. And that just blended in perfectly with the speaker and it gave me like a full range response, right? So now everything else below like that 60 hertz region is taken care of by the subwoofer and the rest mid-range and high frequency is taken care of by, thi by this beauty right here. So you get really good mid-range and high frequency and bass from your subwoofers. Now this way you get incredible depth. It's just, it just rivals any high-end system I've heard for that kind of money, just incredible. So if you are able to go to that length, I highly recommend this setup. It really won't disappoint you, but again, Remember, there is a limitation, and that's that this speaker is really for near field, desktop, you know, small rooms, up to maybe medium rooms, but definitely not large rooms. And I also tried it with various amplifiers from Class D amplifiers like the Stark Audio Fiera and the AD4 that I recently reviewed. I'll link it in the description below. And also, I've tried it with the uh, you know, the Thalo from Danafrips and many, many amplifiers, even a Atoll, NAD, you know, many solid state amplifiers. And the best one that I liked with this speaker was actually in terms of solid state, the Danafrips Apollo, which is a massive, massive transistor amps. And I have to say, my favorite pairing with a speaker, like a mini speaker, like an LS35A or this speaker is with large transistor amps when it comes to solid state. 
and it sounds really really good and the bass has texture it has definitely more bass output but my favorite out of all was the line magnetic now this tube amplifier really just made the mid-range and high frequency bloom the 3d holographicness took the speaker to the next level of sound staging while retaining all the imaging aspects that the speaker is good at. So the phantom center was there, the vocal seemed just like it was just right in front of you. Now it just seemed like there was more air around the singer, around the instruments, and it just had this emotional aspect to it that I just grabbed me and, and took me in to the music in a different way than a song state amplifier did with this particular matching. And I don't know what it is with these mini monitors like LS358 and tube amplifiers, but even with this, it just made the mid-range and high-frequency holographic just absolutely lovely, grabbed me emotionally, just all that. Just just, mm, just amazingly good. Just so, so good. But definitely didn't have the impact, so if you want bass, then you do want to add a subwoofer for a you know, tube amplifier combination. Now, if you are on the budget, another good solution that I tried was the Wilsonton 300B amplifier, and that was great. If you have the Wilsonton R8, that's also a great combination. The Wilsonton R8 will have more bass impact with this particular speaker. And so overall, I mean, this speaker was really, really fun to have and experience. And I was really excited because there's not just one solution to the speaker. You can set it up with a mid-range and high frequency and sound staging and imaging you know, definition and then go for a subwoofer to add that full range scale sound. Or you can have it closer to the wall for if you don't really care about the full range aspect but want adequate bass out of these speakers. So there's multiple ways to set up these speakers to really kind of maximize it. But overall, flexibility is there with a speaker. And it makes sense because it's designed for condos in Korea in smaller spaces and they're really just amazing with vocals and strings probably because of the aspect of Korean culture and music in Korea but overall I just fell in love with the speaker it's just a beautiful sounding speaker absolutely love it highly recommended uh, for you to try and definitely add the isoacoustic feet if you want that perfect airy feeling because I definitely feel that the speaker benefited from the isoacoustic feet 100%. Another last note, I do want to ask you guys what music are you guys playing right now in your system? I want to know so comment down below and maybe I'll play them and see if I like them add to my playlist because I'm working on my full playlist. I have around 500 tracks currently added to my playlist and I'm going to be making it available for my Patreons. And yeah, and consider joining our Patreons as well. Our Patreon page has exclusive Telegram chats, recommendation lists that will be getting updated, you know, every month or so with new recommendations. This is definitely going on that list. But yeah, uh, definitely consider joining the Patreon and also make sure to leave your current music favorite in the comment below. What would you like to play on a speaker like this. Let me know in the comment section and I'll consider adding it to the playlist and I'll let you guys know when that playlist is released on the Patreon page as well. So thanks very much and I'll see you guys on the next one. Make sure to click that like button if you enjoyed this video. It helps my channel out and it doesn't cost you anything. Make sure to subscribe for more and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.